All right, today we got rotations and uh, we're going to talk about different types of symmetry. Uh, so first vocab word, rotation, that's moving each vertex of a shape in the same distance about a fixed point. So you can take, you know, maybe a line and then usually going to rotate it. And usually we're going to do counterclockwise around a center of rotation. So the center of rotation, that's a point that you're rotating uh, a figure around or about. Um, and uh, sometimes you can do this around the origin, sometimes you can do this around an ordered pair. Uh, you, you got some constructions that you can do uh, rotations around as well. Um, one of the key properties of rotations is that everything, once you rotate it, everything will, um, it'll be about the same distance from the center of rotation right here. So if you look here, these points are kind of like the same distance from that center point right there. All right, and that's one of the properties there of rotations. Uh, angle of rotation, that's just the number of degrees that you rotate something. Here's your coordinate notation for rotations. Now, um, like yesterday, you're going to use an R, except if we use a big R, we don't know if that's a reflection or rotation. So rotations, you're going to use a lowercase r. And then you're going to say of 90 degrees, usually you kind of write that a little small right there, 90 degrees, and then around what you're rotating around, so O right there for the origin. Oops, sorry, that's the bell. And then you do that around each point, or you do that for each point, X comma Y. All right, and this means right here, rotate <clears throat> 90 degrees about the origin. Um, unless it says otherwise, most of the times in this class, we're going to go counterclockwise, and I'll use CCW for that. Okay, properties of rotations. Um, we're going to say it keeps the same orientation. It's not going to reverse the letters or the, you know, the, the points, I guess, of the shape that you're going to do. Like if it's ABC going clockwise around a figure, then it'll still be ABC going clockwise around a figure. So same orientation. The only thing that really changes orientation that we've gone over so far is reflections. Um, and then <coughs> another uh, property is that they're going to be rigid, which remember that means that basically make congruent figures. So rigid, all the sides and side lengths are going to stay the same. All the angles are also going to stay the same. Okay. Now here's a couple of little rules uh, for your rotations here, if you want to memorize these. With 90 degrees, if we're going counterclockwise, if we do 90 degrees, you're going to switch the order. You're going to say Y, comma, X. And then this is kind of weird. You're going to switch the Y coordinate. So whatever Y was, you're going to go and change the sign. So I like to say switch order, and actually before you switch order, go ahead and change the Y sign, and then switch order. All right, and that's kind of a easy rule there to remember. Um, as far as 180 goes, you actually keep the same order, but then you switch both signs. All right, and then, so I'm going to throw some negatives there out front. And then the last one here, it's real similar to 90 degrees. You're going to switch the order, but then you're only going to change, there it goes, you're going to change the X sign right there. So change X. But then switch order. And that's one way to do it. Now another way I teach you when I'm in class is actually taking your page and literally rotating your page or a piece of paper, whatever you're working on, 90 degrees, and then figuring out where all the new points should be located. And that's kind of how I do it. So I do it more like by hand, but um, since I'm teaching this on the iPad, it's kind of hard to rotate the iPad screen.
All right, so uh, here's the first one that we're going to rotate here. We got uh, this quadrilateral uh, KLMN. So I'm going to go ahead and plot that just so we can kind of see what's going on there. So you got K at uh, 3 comma 2. You got L at 4 comma 2. You got M at 4 comma negative 3. And then N at 2 comma negative 1. All right, so I guess we are going to take that shape right there and rotate it. And we're going to rotate uh, 270 degrees. So that'll be a couple of spins there on that. So we're going to use our rules. We know we need to switch the order and change the X sign for these here. So I'm going to do that for each of our new points here. We're going to use our prime notation. So you have K right there is 3 comma 2, so I need to switch the order, 2 comma 3. And then I need to go through and change the X or the original X right there. So that would be 2 comma negative 3 or whatever it was the negative, whatever the original X was. So make that negative. So I'm going to go ahead and highlight those just so I don't mess that up. So L, so it will be L prime here. We're going to switch the order, so that'll be 2 comma, and then switch the original x sign, so 2 comma, negative 4. Okay, m prime, so you're going to switch the order, so negative 3, but then you're going to switch that original x right there, negative 4. Okay, n prime, we're going to go and switch the order and change the x sign right there. So it's, you know, kind of that same thing a couple times. Now we're going to go plot our new figure here, and hopefully it looks like a rotation. So here's our new K prime, our L prime, 2 comma, negative 4, and then negative 3, negative 4, over here for M prime, and then N prime. I think I, what did I mess up here? Negative three. Oh, I see what I did here. I didn't go down far enough. Yeah, that's what I did wrong. Okay, I was looking at that. I'm like, what am I doing here? All right, um, sorry about that. So you got two comma negative three. Didn't start low enough. It's Friday, can't count, I guess. There we go. So K prime, L prime, M prime, and then there's that last one. Alright. And I noticed I did something wrong when I was about to draw it. Uh, it didn't look like the same figure there. So remember these should be rigid right there. So I guess you take it and you rotate it all the way around 270 degrees and you get that right there. So Graph the image of uh, KLMN, the new one. So we did that. We're good to go. All right, on a graph, plot segment AB, where A is negative two or negative one comma two, and then B is one comma six. So we'll go ahead and do that. I guess I'll do the original here in red. And there's A. B is going to be one comma six. All right, so ninety degrees right there. Our rule for that is switch the order but then go change the Y sign, the original Y sign. So I'm going to go ahead and highlight the original Y sign so I don't mess that up there. So we'll say A prime here, switch the order, 2 comma negative 1, but then switch the original Y. So that would be negative 2 and then negative 1. Then you're going to have B prime. So then you're going to switch the order, 6 comma 1, but then change the original Y, negative 6, and then comma positive 1 there. So go ahead and plot those, see what that looks like negative 2, negative 1, and then B will be negative 6, positive 1. There you go. Oh, and I forgot to draw my line here originally. There you go. Notice that these right here, these points A prime and B prime, they look about the same distance from the center that we're rotating around. So that is what we are shooting for. Okay, I think uh, they go back now and they ask us to go take A, B, the original points right there, and go ro to, rotate 270 degrees. So we just did that one on the previous problem there. So remember, that is changing your 
signs of your x value, your original x value, but then also switching the order. So I'll call this a double prime, the double prime notation right there. Uh, just two little ticks. So I'll switch the order. You're going to go two comma negative one, but then you want to change the sign of your original x value. So that would be two comma uh, positive one, and then b double prime. Switch the order six comma one, but then switch that sign around there. So six comma negative one. So six comma negative one. There's your b prime or b double prime, and then a. Um, what was that? Uh, two, oh yeah, two one. So there's that point right there. And then there you go. Okay, uh, next one here. I guess we're going to do uh, a triangle. Kind of the same thing. It gets repetitive after that once you do it a couple of times. Uh, so a one comma one, b five comma two. Hopefully I can count better. And then two comma six for C. Kind of hard to see when I'm right with my finger here. There we go. All right, so rotate ninety degrees. You're gonna do that to ABC. So ninety degrees. Remember that switch the order, change the Y sign. So that'd be one comma one, but change the original. Y sign right there, so it'll be a negative out there in front. So it'll be A prime, B prime, switch your order, so that's 2 comma 5, but then change the original Y. And then C, change the order, 6 comma 2, but then change the original Y. Let's go do that. I guess I should probably color code these a little bit better. We'll do that one in red there. So negative 1, 1, you got negative 2, 5, and then negative 6. Positive two. Okay, so let's go and do ABC for the next one for two hundred seventy degrees. So I'm going to raise some of this stuff here. Let's do this. I guess we'll do this one here in blue. So remember that is switch the order, uh, but then change the original X sign. So I'm going to highlight those right there. So switch the order, one comma one, but then change the original X, or I guess you could say the new Y right there. So A double prime, B double prime, a little bit easier when they're not the same number. Switch the order, two comma five, but then change the original X right there. And then C double prime. Switch your order six comma, and then change the original x right there. So let's do that. One comma negative one. There's a prime or a double prime. Two comma negative five. There's b double prime, and then c double prime. Six comma negative two. There's your figure right there. Notice all those points. A is the closest on all of them. B is kind of like the medium distance on all of them. And then C is a little bit longer than all, on all of them there. So Now as far as constructions, uh, using the iPad, as far as teaching, that's a little tricky. But there is a lot of stuff on YouTube that you can go Google. So I would just go and type into you know Google or YouTube or whatever. Just type in uh, rotation of a figure uh, using constructions. You can find a lot of good stuff on that. So we're going to go ahead and skip over to the symmetry part of the lesson here. Uh, so reflectional symmetry, that is if you have a, it's a line where you can fold a figure right across that line and it's congruent on both sides. So essentially just looking for a line that makes the figure the same on both sides. Uh, the line of symmetry, that is the line that we're talking about. All right, you got rotational symmetry. Um, which is a rotation of 180 degrees or less that maps a figure onto itself. So how many degrees would I need to rotate something for it to look exactly the same? And then point symmetry is when something has a rotational symmetry of exactly 180, or um, sometimes I tell my students this, it's something that adds to 180. And I think we'll see a couple of examples like that here in a moment. So as far as line symmetry, 
for this first one here, you're going to have two different lines right there. Now, it looks, I have a lot of students say, well, what about the diagonal thing? If I fold this right across the diagonal, like this point would be kind of like way over here. They wouldn't line up on top of each other. So you got to be really careful on this. So does a figure have any reflectional symmetry? Yes, it does. It's got two lines. So that's usually what I write, two lines for that. Does it have rotational symmetry? Uh, now, I could rotate this 180 degrees. So that would give us, you know, that's our rotational symmetry. It would look like the same exact rectangle if I rotated it 180 degrees. And then since it adds, that adds up to 180, we say that this thing has point symmetry as well. So that's kind of what you do for all these. I mean, it's really repetitive after that. So uh, this one here, as far as line symmetry, a lot of people see the first line right here, but sometimes we forget about the other lines. So there's one line right there on this regular pentagon, or this thing that looks like a regular pentagon. But you can also go from the other vertex to that other point there. If you fold it across that line, all the points would line up. So actually, when you do this right here, you're going to have five different lines right there. So you have five lines. Now, as far as finding how many degrees you would need to rotate something for it to be mapped onto itself here, you're going to go and take 360, and you're going to divide by the critical points that you have. Now, in this case, these critical points, those are going to be your vertices there. So I'm going to do 360 divided by 5, and I'll be rotational symmetry of 72 degrees on this one. All right, now, 72 degrees, I'm not going to be able to get that to add up. 180 so it does not have point symmetry so no point symmetry now as far as C goes right here this is basically a pentagon but it looks kind of flattened I guess you could say it's a vertical compression I guess if you wanted to get real fancy there but uh, anyways that's the only line of symmetry since it's kind of flattened you're not gonna be able to do a line on the other side because it wouldn't fold back up to itself so it's got one line and then actually, since it's flattened, you're not going to have any rotational symmetry. So no rotational, which therefore means no point symmetry as well. So essentially after this, it's repetitive. So I'm going to kind of blow through these quickly here. So got uh, a hexagon here. So I'm going to go side to sides. I'm going to go corners to corners or vertices to vertices. So it looks like there we got six lines. If I want to find the rotational symmetry, 360 divided by 6, so that would be 60 degrees. And then I can add up 60 three times. If I do 60, 60, and then one more 60 degree rotation, that would give us 180. So this thing also has point symmetry as well. Now as far as the letter R right there, there's really nowhere you can draw a line. You can't rotate it, so this has no symmetry. None, period. Letter N, looks like you can get just one line going down the middle. Uh, as far as rotational symmetry, if you rotate it 180 degrees, it makes a W instead. And that's not going to get us back to the M, so it just has one line. One line symmetry, and that's it there on that. Now, D, this is kind of an interesting case. This is one where you don't necessarily have any line symmetry, but you actually have rotational symmetry. And this one, we got to think more logically on this one. So you just think about it. If you spin it completely upside down, that's 180 degrees. That will match up there. All right, for these here, these aren't necessarily normal shapes we see, but we can still use our rules of symmetry. It's so like this thing here, it's kind of this weird circular thing, but it's got all this junk here in the middle, like the stars and a little cross. So I see a couple of lines of symmetry that we can do, uh, at least two, but actually I think you can go diagonal. And I guess that gets you one, two, three, four. So four lines. And then you're going to have rotational of... And, for rotational, you want to look at these critical points right here. Uh, so we, we don't really have vertices, but I'm looking at just like key features. And I see, you know, that key feature basically repeat four times. So I'm going to say 360 degrees. 
and then divide it by four, and then that'll be you know 90 degrees for your rotational symmetry, which adds up to 180 eventually. So you can say this thing also has some point symmetry there. So, oh, and actually, you know what? I'm going overboard on this one here because it's just saying, does it have rotational symmetry there? So I guess, you know, you could go, could go back and do the lines, but I guess we don't need to in this case. This one right here, it's kind of like a hexagon inside of a circle. So if I'm just doing rotational symmetry, I'm going 360 divided by those number of key points right there, which there's six of them. So that would be uh, 60 degrees total right there for that. All right, C, um, once again, kind of counting these vertical points. I think there are eight of them here. So, one, two, three, yep, so there's eight of those points going on right there. So that would be 360 divided by eight this time. And I think that gives us 45 degrees in this case. So there's your rotational symmetry. Uh, this last one right here, kind of looking once again for these critical points. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So this one's the same, 360. And then divided by eight, which is 45 degrees. That's about it there on that. Uh, now, these are a little bit different. They're asking, does it have a rotational symmetry um, that I guess if, you know, if, if I rotated like this first one A here by 120 degrees, would you get the same thing? So as long as we can add up to 120 degrees, we're going to be good. So once again, look at these critical points. I'm seeing six of them. So that would be 360 divided by six which gets us 60 degrees. Now, I can do 60 degrees twice, one and then two, and that would be the same figure. It would be mapped onto itself there. So let's see. Does the figure have ro the rotational symmetry shown? Uh, yes, it adds up to. It's 120 degrees, so we're good on that one. Now, as far as B goes, this one actually doesn't have any rotational symmetry. Um, you know, if you rotate it 180 degrees, it's not going to look like the same exact thing. Now, let's see what's going on with this star thing, I guess. So, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Okay, so there's eight points there. So, I'm going to go 360 divided by eight. And then that was 45 degrees right there so that one works out but not P all right kind of you know more of the same thing right here I guess you know different format than the way they're asking here so does this thing have reflectional symmetry yes I see one line right here so one line rotational I don't see any rotational uh, symmetry if you rotate it the only way you can do it is up to 360 degrees right there and we don't really talk about rotating 360 degrees we usually do less than 180. Uh, as far as point symmetry goes, uh, this thing um, doesn't have point symmetry because it doesn't add to 180. So ha if it has no rotational symmetry, it automatically does not have uh, point symmetry. Okay, this next one here, got this weird little X thing. And I see four lines. And then rotational symmetry, I see 90 degrees on this one here. The reason I'm doing that four critical points, 360 divided by four, gets you 90 degrees. Since I can add up 90 twice to get to 180, it does have point symmetry. It will add up to 180 degrees. All right, last one here, what do we got? Reflectional symmetry. This one here, this is kind of weird here. It looks like you got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven of these critical points here. I think your line symmetries are going to go from vertex, like one of these like vertices pointing out, to one of these vertices that are pointing inward. So you got a bunch of these lines here, trying to get them all. I think I hit them all there. So there are seven lines right there. Rotational symmetry. So I guess we're going to have to go through and do uh, do 360. And then since there are seven of those critical points right there, we'll do 360 divided by seven. And that actually doesn't even come out. So if you wanted to stay exact, I guess um, I don't think that reduces at all. So 
uh, yeah, you just write it as 360 over 7, or you can use the decimal. Uh, the decimal is approximately 51 degrees. Um, but if you want exact, you'd have to say 360 over 7 for the rotational symmetry. But it does have rotational symmetry. Now, since we can't get that weird-looking decimal to add up to exactly 180 degrees, we're going to say this thing does not have point symmetry. And that is it for your lesson today.